Released in 1973, Badlands marked the debut of director Terrence Malick, heralding the arrival of a unique voice in American cinema. This film, which would later become a cult classic, introduced audiences to Malick's distinctive style, a blend of lyrical storytelling, existential musings, and striking visual poetry. Inspired by true events, Badlands took a simple story of crime and turned it into a profound meditation on youth, love, and the American dream, forever changing the landscape of independent filmmaking. But how did this extraordinary film come to be, and what makes its origin story so compelling? The story of Badlands begins in the mind of Terrence Malick, a Harvard-educated philosophy student turned filmmaker. Malick was fascinated by the true story of Charles Starkweather and Carol Ann Fugate, a young couple who went on a killing spree across the Midwest in the late 1950s. This brutal episode captivated America, and Malick saw in it a framework for exploring deeper themes of innocence, violence, and the search for meaning in a vast, indifferent world. Armed with his passion for existential literature and a desire to create something entirely unique, Malik began writing a screenplay that would soon capture the attention of the film industry. Malik's script, titled Badlands, was both a road movie and a psychological portrait, telling the story of Kit Carruthers, played by Martin Sheen, and Holly Sargis, played by Sissy Spacek, two young lovers who embark on a crime spree across South Dakota and Montana. The plot unfolds through Holly's dreamy narration, revealing a world seen through the eyes of a naive teenager swept up in a whirlwind of violence. Malick's screenplay was unconventional in its tone and structure, blending romance, horror, and a detached, almost mythic perspective that was unlike anything else at the time. In 1972, Malick secured funding for Badlands with the help of producer Edward Pressman, raising an initial budget of around $300,000 a modest sum even by independent film standards. Casting Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek, relatively unknown actors at the time, proved to be a stroke of genius. Sheen's portrayal of Kit, a James Dean-like figure with a cold, enigmatic charm, and Spacek's performance as Holly, an impressionable and detached girl mesmerized by Kit's charisma, created a powerful and unforgettable on-screen dynamic. Their chemistry captured the complex relationship at the heart of the film, a blend of innocence and menace that kept audiences captivated. The production of Badlands was notoriously challenging. Shot on location in the American Midwest, the cast and crew faced numerous obstacles, from harsh weather conditions to budget constraints. Despite these difficulties, Malik remained committed to his vision, often rewriting scenes on set and working closely with cinematographer Tak Fujimoto to capture the film's haunting visual style. Malik's direction emphasized natural light, expansive landscapes, and meticulously composed shots that evoked a sense of both beauty and menace. His approach gave the film a lyrical, almost dreamlike quality that contrasted sharply with its violent subject matter. Bad Bands premiered at the New York Film Festival in October 1973, where it received critical acclaim for its innovative storytelling, haunting visuals, and compelling performances. Critics praised Malick's ability to transform a gruesome true crime story into a poetic exploration of youth, freedom, and moral ambiguity. Roger Ebert, a prominent film critic, lauded the film as a masterful work of great purity and simplicity. Despite its critical success, the film initially struggled at the box office, as its unconventional style and narrative structure differed significantly from the mainstream cinema of the time. However, over the years, Badlands gained a devoted following and is now regarded as one of the greatest American films of the 1970s. Its influence can be seen in countless films that followed, particularly in the genre of road movies and character-driven dramas. The film's blend of stark realism and lyrical beauty became a hallmark of Malick's style, which he would continue to develop in his later works, such as Days of Heaven, 1978, The Thin Red Line, 1998, and The Tree of Life, 2011. Beyond its stylistic achievements, Badlands left a profound impact on its viewers and the film industry at large. It challenged the conventions of traditional storytelling, focusing less on plot and more on mood, character psychology, and visual metaphors. Malik's use of voiceover narration 
natural landscapes, and an almost meditative pace would influence countless filmmakers, establishing him as a pioneer of American independent cinema. The film also set the stage for the gritty, introspective films that would dominate the 1970s, reflecting the social and cultural anxieties of a post-Vietnam War America. Malik's debut also helped launch the careers of its stars. Martin Sheen's brooding, intense performance as Kit was a breakthrough that led to numerous significant roles in the following decades, including his iconic portrayal of Captain Willard in Apocalypse Now, 1979. Similarly, Sissy Spacek's nuanced portrayal of Holly would open doors to a successful career, leading to her Academy Award-winning performance in Coal Miner's Daughter, 1980. Today, Badlands is celebrated not only for its narrative and visual innovation, but also for its lasting impact on American cinema. It remains a testament to the power of independent filmmaking and the unique vision of Terrence Malick. The film's exploration of love, violence, and the search for meaning continues to resonate with audiences, offering a timeless reflection on the complexities of human nature and the American experience. In a landscape often dominated by formulaic stories and predictable plots, Badlands stands as a reminder of the magic that can happen when a filmmaker dares to break the mold and tell a story in an entirely new way.